Hello, welcome to Sona Pon 7. Thank you so much for joining us this Friday. Before we get into our first conversation, which is based on wine, um, I want to remind you that we are uh, to please follow us on our various social media platforms, which are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Like our page, share our page with your entire community, your entire network. Like our post, comment on them, and let us know what it is that you want to see us have conversations about here on Sona Pon 7. Because, of course, you know, Part of the show is connecting with you, being relevant, and of course, bringing conversations that will change your life, will change your perspective. So, again, that's why you cannot miss Sun Up on 7. And let's, I invite you now to join us in our first conversation. Like I told you, we're going to be talking about wine with Belizean-American winemaker Joseph Smith and with Miss Kristen Newton and Raquel Mantufol. And they are the owners of Someplace South Bar. So what's happening is that they're hosting an event called Meet the Winemaker. And of course, you're going to be meeting the winemaker first here on Sun Up on 7. So good morning, Joseph. How are you? Thank you for joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Kristen good. and Raquel. Good morning. Good morning. Joseph, how are you doing this Friday? You know what? This is beautiful to just be in belief. I mean, I look outside and it's not raining as I came from Southern National and two, three days of rain was a little tough. So once we got out here, I'm like, wow. Beautiful, but happy to be here. It's a beautiful day, so yep, I'm ready to get this day going. Awesome. Thank you for joining us on Sun Up on 7. Raquel and Kristen, how are you both ladies doing? Excellent. Doing great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm sure you're looking forward to this event as well. We're very excited for this event and to have the opportunity to have Joseph here. It's gonna be it's gonna be really, really cool. So could you tell us? Can you tell us, Kristen or Raquel, any, either one of you can grab this question. I wanted to know, what made you think we should have a meet the winemaker type of event? Like what, it's like, you know what, we should do something a little different. It's 2022, let's spice it up with some wine and meeting yeah. the winemaker. And choose, and choose Joseph. And yeah. choose Joseph too as well. Like what, how did this brainchild come to be? <laughs> What's about Joseph? That's it's so actually special? a pretty good story. Um, his nephew was a sales rep for the company in San Ignacio, bringing the wines in. Oh. and happened to stumble in here one day and give us a taste testing. Mm. We enjoyed the wines, but then he started telling us the story. And Joseph's biography and his story of how he rose from just going there doing construction all the way up to a winemaker that's well-known in California with excellent wines was such a good story. So we were at a fundraiser that Crocs was putting on for the Christmas collection, and they were doing a tasting for Playa del Sala. And we went and approached Johan with that idea. And he goes, well, my uncle's going to actually be back for the holidays. Let me see if I can get him out there. <laughs> and it just kind of took a life of its own. And we're so excited. And our customers here are so excited for the event tonight. It's going to be small and intimate that they can talk to him and enjoy his wine line. And then we approached our staff. We have a really good staff here. So we approached the staff and said, hey, what do you guys think about this? And then we came up with a menu, three-course meal, like, and then had Joseph do the pairings. What would we do with these meals? What would we do with you know this serving, this serving, this serving? And they, they, my, our chef Miss Anel, she just came up with the best menu. So it's going to be great, and we yeah. have such a great staff. So it's going to be, it's going to be really fantastic. Wow, I, I that definitely it. sounds like an exciting event. And I want to say thank you for giving the opportunity for a Belizean to be able to highlight all the goodness that he's doing. I mean, Joseph coming all the way from California an incredible winemaker. Oh, wow, that's, that's very exciting. I just want to pinpoint, Kev. What's that? That all of this started because they drank good wine. You yeah. know, like, that's, that's how good ideas come yeah. together. Yeah. Right? Yes. When you drink good wine. When you drink good wine, good Why not? Out. Right? Yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That good wine. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Joseph, I mean... Kristen and Raquel shared some background story about you, uh, how they go about meeting you, and, and a bit of what, how you got into, into winemaking. But let's hear it from you. What got you interested yeah. into making wine? Well, again, I mean, growing up in Belize, as you know, uh, it's not especially, especially coming from a large family, which a lot of us are familiar with. 
life could be a little tough, you know, for a young man coming up. So sometimes you take, choose the wrong path and stuff. It happens, you know, just because there's not enough um, accessibility to try to get what you want in life just because of the financial strain that most families go through. So at an early age, I, f- I felt in an early age, I was an entrepreneur. I was always trying to find stuff to do, whether it's DJing, whether it's um, selling coconuts. I was just active. And, um, but it was, it, was, it was so easy. It wasn't challenging. I'm like, you know what? I need to find something better. So I kind of migrated to the U.S. at, that, at an early age, at uh, 20. And um, that's when I actually, when I got out there, just like you said, I started working construction work. No, any, didn't know anything about wine. Wine was distant for us. I mean, we didn't grow up drinking wine here in Belize, which I, I noticed people are changing now, but back then, that's just how it was. You know, we were beer and rum. That's how we got by. Right. Uh, so going there, was a, it was an um, eye-opener for me, just seeing how people treated the product and, um, that I know nothing about, but people adore this stuff. So I took a lot more, I pay a lot more attention to it and put a little more effort than I would do on anything else. And I said, you know what, this might be something that I could um, rely on. And I went all in about two years later, I went full force into it and, um, you know, just learn, make work my way up. And um, that's, that's how I became where I'm at today. But it's not but hard work, nothing but hard work is where I'm at. So went to school, learned the chemistry of wine, a background for winemaking. And, um, here I am today, you know, coming back to Belize and trying to create something, um, a little more wine culture in Belize. Not that it's not here, but I think we can improve it and do better. If that's what I can do, that's, that's what I'm here for. Awesome. Love wow. It. Coming back and being like, you know what? Even though I left at an early age, I'm going to come back and I'm going to invest in my country. I've got my craft together. I'm ready and prepared to give back. I love it for you, Joseph. I love that journey as well. I want to look at your types of wine and also the passion that you have into wine. Like you mentioned you want to come back and like create a different atmosphere, but like, can you go a little bit deeper for me and share, and share the drive that comes with it? And then of course, the different types of wines. Sure, so <clears throat> when I, when, when coming back and creating something, and when I say a wine culture, people drink wine, but it's just because, hey, I, I could go to the store and buy wine. But if you really look at the culture of wine, it's a, uh, it's something that you have to appreciate and it's something that you really actually create opportunities. That's exactly what it did for me. So my whole thing behind it is I want to open somebody's eye that didn't have any idea about, about wine. I don't think they need to go somewhere which, where, the, where wine is produced. I want them to say, you know what? We have that opportunity right here in Belize because we have some experts doing it, talking about it. And now we, he brought that and made it accessible to us right here at home. So that's what I mean by I want to give back and actually build that wine culture. So that's what it means, you know? So me coming out here and opening a business, I want to educate. I want people to take this seriously because it transcends into many different roads. I mean, you, you could work at a hotel, they need wine. You could actually say, you know what? I want to create my own wine here in Belize. Um, you might not be able to grow the grapes properly, but you can start doing it and understanding it. Who knows? 30 years from now, we might be able to produce grapes and make good wine here in Belize. It's climate change is happening. So all of those things... <laughs> All of those things starts from now, you know, it starts from now. So I think by me doing this, it showcased that it can be done. And if you bring it to my door, I should take it seriously and look into it and Aww. see if I can carve my avenue out of there. I'm creating a bunch of different wines. If you want to talk about the wines, I have one here. I'll show you guys. This is something that we actually um, do really well here in Belize. It's called a Sit Moscato. It's a... Mm. Uh, um, it, Sweeter wine, it's, um, again, a lot of people say, oh, it's a dessert. Yes, it can be, but you can pair it with food as well. This is one of my first wine that I produce under my uh, brand, under my ownership, which is the Tip Moscato. And then I have another wine produced under, for me as well under my ownership. It's called a Cabernet Sauvignon. This is called the Kong. That's my favorite. Another, <laughs> that's another brand. So we also have that. And I have a bunch more wines that I produce for other clients. And um, I bring imported here to Belize. So the thing is that I'm trying to do, I'm not trying to import wine, but I want to import wine into Belize that I am attached to, that my hands uh, went through. Okay. All right. So, I can hear you. So what's what's the name of your uh, brand? Is it Sip? So yes, yeah, Sip is one Sip is one brand, which is yeah, the Sip Moscato. I got a Sip Moscato and a Sip Rosé. So that's one brand. Okay. Which 
which I will produce more wines under that brand. Then I have the concrete, which I produce a concrete Cabernet Sauvignon, a, con a concrete Zinfandel. That's my other brand. And then, like I said, the other one I showed you was a Rippy, and I produced a Sauvignon Blanc under that brand. And I'm the winemaker for Clinker Brick Winery, which produces wine that ships all over the world. Wow. So I'm their lead director of winemaking. And um, I got to say, that's my stepping stone for where I'm at today, because working for a brand of that magnitude mm -hmm. gives you recognition on the big stage. So yes. I think that propelled everything to happen. But again, hard work is why all of this happened as well. So. Wow. I am, I am very proud of your journey, Joseph, and congratulations for everything that you've done for yourself. And the fact that you're thinking about coming back to Belize and putting a new culture, culture in here. I want to know, what's because what's, in Belize, we, we, we know fruit wine is a thing, especially as the Christmas is right around the corner. What makes uh, your wines different from, from those fruit wines? And is there the possibility of those fruit wines shifting into the kind of wines that you're producing? So <clears throat> that's a good question. I think one of the things that, that, that we have to realize is when it comes to fruit wine, um, most people look at it and they say, okay, I'm going to make wine out of um, whatever fruit is there, berries yeah. or, or cashew or something like that. We're not going through a refining process of making this wine. We're making it um, kind of, all right, who am I trying to please with it? I'm trying to please the neighbor next door. I'm trying to please the guy. And, 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 and that can change. I'm not saying that's going to change. To say it's going to be something competitive to great wine of the, of, of the style that I'm producing in, in California. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably going to be a challenging thing, but it's two different procedures that you're going to do here. Two different things. Now, I think that it's possible to do that. It's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of community help. Yeah. And, and, and truly, a lot of people from Belize have to buy into the idea that, you know what, yeah. I should start looking into these products and see how I can make this thing um, more accessible, more, 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 more um, visible. And maybe that might be a stepping stone. So even the little guy that's making the cashew wine, maybe that would be something that he could dive a little deeper into and see, you know what, what can I do to actually make this product something that can sit on the shelf amongst the Thailands? And... It has to be us pushing that, pushing that to him. Us meaning the, the, the audience, the people that live here, the community. We have to push it and say, you got to try this. It's great. Yes, and that's how we will get there. But if it can be done, I think it can be done. It just need a little bit of time and effort to put into it. But it wow. can be done. Okay. Most definitely. I, uh, we've had a guest, I forgot. I think it was Chris that mentioned to us, there's so much power when consumers use their pocket to show where the demand is. And so I think, like you mentioned, when you change the culture, the wine culture of how people see wine, that is actually going to cause the smaller businesses, the people that are just, you know, making the cashew wine and so forth to think, hey, let me go a little bit deeper. Let me try yeah. to understand that it's more than just making it for my neighbor so, or from, from my friend or sharing it, you know, like a, I could go a little bit further and make this into something that can be able to go international and people can be able to buy it. I know this is Belizean wine. So I think it kind of right. changes the dynamic. Belize, yeah. yeah, yeah, made by a Belizean. Like, how much better does it get there? Belizean wine made by a Belizean. Like, right. can't get any better than that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You know, I, I like when, when you go wine tasting and they're like, oh, you can taste this fruit and that fruit and that fruit. And you're right there. I'm like, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, it's, it's an experience that I think everybody should give it a try because when you go wine tasting, they would, they would, they would, they would teach you about those things. So um, at this point, I want to bring back Kristen and Raquel into the conversation. Can you share more details about Meet the Winemaker event? What's the location? Um, is there any cost? What's the timing like? Um, Raquel and Kristen? Yes. Um, the event starts 5 to 9 and it's reservations only. We're located in San Pedro, two and a quarter miles south of town. Okay. We have a three course dinner that's paired with a four ounce glass of wine at each course. And the cost is 125 Belize for that. Mm -hmm. All right, so there you go. Folks in San Pedro that want to meet the winemaker, the Belizean winemaker, you can walk in today at 7 p.m. The details, of course, we're going to be sharing them on our Facebook page for people that want to 
follow that and yeah so there we go Thank reservations you are required reservations because are again required. we are adhering to covid regulations we're being able to follow these things so doesn't not just because why and then you're going to show up <laughs> let's, be, let's be mindful here we do not want to put raquel and kristen in danger her yeah. make anybody shut no. down this amazing event let's make sure we make reservations Yes. Yep, reservations, and we're running Ready. at 30% capacity. Oh, okay. okay, awesome. So, guys, okay, now it gets serious, serious. Call in very, very early. I want to just quickly right. ask um, Raquel and Kristen, either one of you can take this, or both of you can take this. I know you've mentioned, you know, bringing in um, Joseph's wine and just, like, the um, idea of loving it. How has the feedback been like for other people trying his wine? Have you gotten any, like... Um, comments about anything of how they've taken on to this taste, this flavor that comes with Joseph's sip? Well, it's been kind of interesting. The people who have tried it have been mostly tourists or expats here. Um, they love it and end up buying a bottle to bring back with them to their condo. We've had two customers that live here and one from California and one from Montana that already knew of him and his wines and are a big fan and I had, we had to order his top, top wine, wine for them to take home. So. <laughs> he, he's known here. He does have an audience already here. We're hoping just to build that up a little more. Most yeah. definitely. So let's, let's help to build that more. Joseph, can you tell us where can we find your wine in country? Sure. So um, we are... Hello? Hi. I was asking where in the country can we find your wines? Yes. Yeah, so we are, um, we are distributed... Throughout the country of Belize, I, I, would, I would say anywhere from far down south to way up north and everything in between. Um, in Belize City, we are in a, in a few restaurants out there. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you want to buy it at the market, uh, Save You Market and definitely Brodis also carry our product. Um, I believe it's the Brodis on the um, Northern Highway. Is that okay. what I think? That, that's correct. Yeah, that's, that's the Golden that's Highway. The, the Northern <laughs> That's the one that we, are, we have our product in, in Belize City. And in a bunch of different restaurants as well. In a bunch of different restaurants in Belize. San Pedro, we're in a handful of resorts out here in San Pedro. One of the things that we have not done and um, we're, we're, we're not too uh, fond of doing it is trying to sell it to um, markets that we believe it's not supposed to carry our product in there just because of the style of wine that we're making and how we want it to be handled. That's really important. So we choose to put it into places that already have a wine culture, and we just want to complement to it with the quality of the wine that we bring in. We also have a storefront in San Ignacio, off of the Bullet Tree Road. It's number 73 Bullet Tree Road. That's where you can come in and do a wine tasting. Mm -hmm. We have a night outside deck where you can sit down, and we do charcuterie board with the pairing of the wines, and Ooh. you can we host big it. parties out there. So that's something that you can always reserve, and reservation is best for us. So if you're ever in Southern National Town, make sure to check us out out there. What's the um, name of so, the location? Yeah. What's the name of the location called, again? It's called Wine Smith Tasting Room, and it's on, seven, on number 73 Bullet Tree Road. So that's our storefront tasting room. All right. The way Kevin's looking right now, he's about to catch a bus and go right yeah, there. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I, 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 I want to go to Southern National right now. <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> Mention my name, tell him, hey, Joseph sent me here. You might get a good discount. Ah, <laughs> See? Thank you. You're the promo code. <laughs> All right, Joseph, so as, as we wrap up this conversation, uh, any last words for our viewers? Sure. Um, if you guys can make it out there tonight, you will get a, a deep dive into um, how wine is made and um, why I choose to get into the wine business or how I got into the wine business. So you will get a deeper dive and understanding of, of what exactly I'm trying to do here in Belize. So I would say make it on out there. Um, hopefully this is not the last event I can I, I do here in Belize. Hopefully there's a lot of this to come. And who knows, maybe in the near future, it might not just be Joseph Smith from Belize, but three, four, five, six other winemakers from Belize doing what I'm doing. Definitely. So hopefully that's what the are people for. Definitely. Yes, and we, I And hopefully love we can that. taste your wine too. Oh, yes. Um, Joseph, are you sending some wine for us so we can be <laughs> able to try that out too as well? You know what? That that can be arranged. I believe you're in contact with one of our sales rep, and um, I, I, I don't see that being a problem. We could definitely arrange that with you guys. Awesome. We love to hear that. And all the best, Raquel, Kristen, Joseph, on today's event. All the best. And everybody, come out and enjoy. Remember, they're doing 30%. Again, I repeat, 
30, 3 zero, not 13, guys. And again, so sad, it's 30. And so make sure you do your reservations as soon as possible. The event starts at 7 p.m. And so it's going to be... It starts at 5. Oh, it starts at 5? My bad, my yes. bad. Kevin said it's 7, okay. so Kevin was wrong. He was the one that <laughs> led, us, led us astray. <laughs> I'm going to throw the blame on Kevin. But yes, make sure you make it out. Call in, be able to have a, a night out where you can... Your taste buds can go on a trip somewhere else that they're not used to. And so with that, I thank you again, um, Kristen and Raquel and Joseph, for making this event possible. Like Joseph said, I'm hoping it's not the last. There's many more. And I'm really praying, Joseph, that you get that change in wine culture. We so need it. And having the outcome of new people. And we'd love to have you on the couch physically at some point. So let us know, you know, your schedule and when you can be able to come here. And people like to stay yeah, on the couch. Yeah. Yes, yeah, bring... That would be awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. Ouch. <laughs> awesome. And we're going to have you try your wine too as well with us. Yeah, so we can be able wine, to... Wine we'll do some yeah. wine tasting there. Yes, we're going to have yeah. a nice time. I would love that. Uh, it, that's exactly what I want to do. Awesome. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome. So it's a plan. We have it on live TV, so you can't go back now. <laughs> 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 and so with that, we go to our next commercial break. When we're back, we're going to be speaking with Victoria Liel. The, one of the owners of Dalla Wings about the discussion on her business where you can be able to get your own stretch of Dalla in the wings that are to come. So with that, stay tuned for that yummy conversation.